You've been doing the same thing all the time and you, ex you are expecting a change in your life. There will not be a change. Until you move out of that region of the ordinary into the next region of, of the extraordinary. Mark, Luke chapter 5. I'm going to speak very short. I'm, I'm not, probably I may not go through everything. But please take note of what I'm going to say. Luke chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1 to 11. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were in their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, which was Simon's and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Say, launch out, out into the deep and let your nets. So, sorry, launch out into the deep, say it. And let down your nets. For a catch. Hallelujah. This is a story about Jesus Christ during his mission and uh, missionary work or his assignment on earth. One day, whilst he was speaking to the people, he realized that the multitude that he was speaking to were quite many. In those days, microphones, but God has his own technological way of doing things. Um, he happened to use the reflection of sound. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus went on a boat and he started to speak to the people. And this boat belonged to one gentleman by name Simon. It was at a time when Simon had already gone to sea and he had done everything that he knew how to do but couldn't get any fish for that day. That was his business. That was what he used to do. He gets money from that. He, he feeds his family on that. But unfortunately, during that time of the day, he went to fish and he couldn't bring in anything. He brought in something. It wasn't something, a, a, an amount that he could go out and sell for money. So the scripture says that Simon was there washing the net. And in that process of washing his net, Jesus came in and asked him that he wanted to use his boat. He agreed, gave the boat to Jesus, and Jesus asked him again, push me a little further. Say, push me a little further. <laughs> you know, the Bible says this had happened, so many things took place. We will go there, but one thing I want you to see here is that Whenever God comes to you and asks for something, he knows what he's about to do. When God asks for your time, he knows what he's about to do. When God, God asks for anything from your life, your children, your life, your money, anything, your talent, anything that God asks from us, he knows what he is about to do. So the Bible says that when Jesus asked Simon that, can I use your boat? Simon also agreed. If, we're, if it were to be you or I, probably we might not agree to it. While someone was there doing this and finding problem or thinking about what to do next, here comes Jesus. Can I use your boat? For what? Can't you see what is happening? But the Bible says that he agreed. He gave it to him. And to add much to that pain of not even getting anything, when he had given the boat to Jesus, Jesus again asked him, push me further. Praise the Lord. Push me further. I'm so troubled and I can't do anything. I can't even reason. I can't think. There is nothing I could do. But Jesus said, this is what I want you to do. And that also, he agreed. Church, there is no one that has given anything unto God. 
that has ever run lost. When God asks you for something, he knows why he is asking for it. And so, as we read, the Bible says that Jesus used the boat, and after a time that he had gone through all that he wanted to do, he came back to Simon and said to him that, here is your boat, I want you to go back fishing. And Simon looked at his face and said, Master, this is what we've been doing all night. We have done so much today. We've fished a lot. We've gone through the whole night. We've done everything that we know how. But there was no catch. We couldn't come in with anything. All the fishes have gone to a different state. They've gone to different country. They've, they've traveled from where we normally catch them. The territory that we normally go to. And while these conversations were going on, Jesus again said to him, I'm not asking you to just go to the normal fishing, but I want you to launch into the deep. And when you get into the deep, leave or throw down, let your net go down, and it will catch fish. He looked into the streets of Jesus and said, we have done it, but by your word, we will go. Hallelujah. I want to share with you something quickly today that I pray that from today, every one of us, including myself, all of us, let us think about this message so well and move in a different direction in our lives. There was a statement that Jesus gave to him. He says in verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. You have been fishing only on the local waters, but this time I want you to go into the deep. I want you to move forward. I want you to launch. To launch means to throw or propel against or with force. You must move with force. Hey, amen. That river or that sea upon which they were fishing, it's not a common, it's not a, a, a soft sea. But then Jesus knew what was beyond the, the, the place where they were fishing. He wanted them to go a bit further. See, a bit further. Many Christians today only look at the surface, but we don't think beyond. Today, whatever that you are doing, whether be it your normal daily work or a business that you are in or in the church of God today, within this church, you hearing me, I want you to move or by the word of God, let us all move further, lunch into the deep. Say lunch into the deep. When you see a friend, tell the person, lunch into the deep. You've been fishing at the surface, at the local area for quite a long time. It is time for the church of God to launch out and spread our nets. Praise the Lord. Normally when we do our fishing or our work within the local area, it is what we call our comfort zone. We, 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 we feel so okay, this is where we can do it. No, but there are much more that we can accomplish when we are able to move further. It is not going to be that easy. Risk has to be taken, but we must do what? Lunch into the deep. Whilst we are supposed to go forward, the enemy is trying to push you back. But I pray that we will all understand this and that we will move further. Peter was playing it safe. He was playing it safe. This is our territory. This is where I can even close my eyes and fish. But Jesus says you've had that for a long time. Today, by the word of God, we've been at that position. You've been at that position for a long time. But from today, I expect and I'm looking forward to everyone in this church that we will do what? Lunch into the deep. The men's fellowship must do what? Lunch into the deep. Women's fellowship into the deep. The youth into the deep. Every department, everyone amongst us, whether you belong to a department or not, in your own life, in your business, in your personal life, in your Christian life, we all need to lunch into the deep. Move yourself out and launch yourself there. Amen. Mark chapter 7 talks about two builders, the wise and the foolish builder. The wise builder 
the Bible says that when he was building, he, he took time and, and, and used the word of God. He lived by faith. He had to do a hard work. But the foolish builder went and said, no, I don't want to waste time. I, I, I need to do this quickly. So he just got to a place and the, the, the ground was soft and he started digging. I pray, please, church, let us launch into the deep. Spend time on whatever that you're doing. It may, be, it may not be as quick and fast as you want. But listen, there is a, a, a statement that is said all the time. That is the foolish person that continues to do the same thing expecting to get a different result. You will never get a different result what, when you are doing the same thing and you are getting the same result. There will not be a time that that will change. It is time that we must move forward. Amen. Amen. It is time that we need to do what? Move forward. The differences between an, an extraordinary person is the word what? Extra. So you have just added an extra to the ordinary. Then that makes you an extraordinary person. The extra is you've moved out from the ordinary upon which you fish into the deep side of the sea. That is the extra section. And that makes you an extraordinary person. If you used to read one chapter a day, make all, if all your peers read one chapter a day, make yourself an extraordinary person. Read one and a half chapters a day. That will take you ahead. It is not only me, but it is us. It is my prayer that we will all understand this. That we are going to move from the ordinary set of lifestyle into an extraordinary set of lifestyle. We must all lunch into the deep. Lunch into the deep. If you used to wake up so late and, and just go, please, because of an extraordinary act or because we, need all, we all need to lunch into the deep, it is time for us to learn to wake up early. Jesus just told him, go into the deep. He didn't tell him what is going to happen. But knowing that the deep is so dangerous, Peter said, I know, I've tried everything, but I'm not going to go according to how I know things, but what I know. But I will do it according to your word. People that have done this have succeeded. Prayer, studying the Bible, fellowshipping, working with God, we must learn to do extraordinary things. Don't just be a hearer of the word today. I want you to be a doer of it. Amen. You've been doing the same thing all the time and you, ex you are expecting a change in your life. There will not be a change. Until you move out of that region Amen. of the ordinary into the next region of, of the extraordinary. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you remember the, the ten virgins? Five, and how many? Five. They all had what? Oil. All of them had oil. But the wise did. Thank you. The wives, women, had extra oil. And because they had extra oil, they were able to accomplish their goal successfully. Don't be within the ordinary. Move out of the ordinary into an extraordinary person. Amen. Amen. And all these things will come from the mind. I cannot come there and twist your mind. But we must say to ourselves, because of his word, I will do it. Because of his word, I will do it. When you do an extra time at work, you, got, you get what? Extra pay. And when you get extra pay, they will take extra taxes. Amen. And truly, when you, whether they, even though they will take extra money out of that which you get, yet you will get much more than the ordinary person. 
Some people wait upon the Lord, others don't wait upon the Lord. But those that wait upon the Lord, they will increase in strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. So whilst you are doing that extra work of getting close to God and you are mounting up with wings as eagle, the ordinary person behaves like a chicken. Ask the person sitting close to you, are you a chicken or an eagle? Get an answer. Psalm 20, 42 verse 7 says, The deep calls unto the deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. The deep calleth for the deep. If you want to attract or achieve deep things, you must do deep stuff. If you want to get, gain knowledge, you must do much work to acquire the knowledge. You cannot be sleeping. You cannot be laying down there and the, the knowledge will be thrown to you. It won't work. It will not work. It will not what? Work. It will not work. It won't work. From today, let us all do an extra thing. Launch into the deep. What we've been doing all the time has not been working for you. It has not been working for me, and it's not working for us. It is time that we all move further and do an extra work. We must all launch into the deep. Launch into the deep. And the scripture says that when Peter or Simon... Uh, Adhered to the instructions of Jesus Christ. Stuck to the instructions of Jesus. Obeyed the instructions of Jesus. He got a lot. In a very short time. To the extent that he couldn't even carry it by himself. So he had to call in helpers. Hallelujah. He had to call in helpers. The helpers were in the ordinary set. But when you go into the extra order, you move out of the